Ever touch a hot stove and think, yeah, not doing that again. Ouch, yeah. That's positive punishment in action. And today, we're doing a deep dive into this surprisingly complex concept, all thanks to chapter 14 of Cooper's Applied Behavior Analysis. It's way more interesting than people think. And maybe even, well, a little controversial. So the book says punishment is all about changing behavior, not about, like, revenge or anything. Exactly. It's not about getting even. It's about using consequences to make a behavior happen less. Mm. And actually, if a behavior doesn't decrease, it wasn't really punishment at all. It's just something unpleasant happening. Like with Andrea in the book, right? She was biting and pinching. Right. And it only became punishment when the teacher found something that actually made her stop. If the biting and pinching didn't change, didn't matter what the teacher meant to do. Exactly. The outcome matters, not just the action. Think about it like this, how we learn to avoid things to survive. Ouch. Imagine never learning from pain. We'd be walking into walls, eating, like, poison ivy. Exactly. We'd be making the same mistakes over and over again. <laughs> Punishment done right is part of what keeps us safe. It's true. Helps us thrive, even. But that's where it gets interesting. Because despite that natural role, the book says people constantly get punishment wrong. Right. They might not understand how it works. Yeah. So it's not effective or even worse, it's unethical. Like having a power tool and no idea how to use it. Which is why we're here. We're focusing on positive punishment specifically. Adding something to decrease a behavior, not taking something away. Right. That's negative punishment. A whole other topic. Positive punishment is adding a consequence that makes the behavior less likely to happen again. Like a recipe. And the book lays out the ingredients. First up, immediacy. The faster the consequence, the better. Right. Think of it like you burn your hand on the stove. You instantly connect that pain to the hot surface. The longer the gap, the weaker the connection. Then there's intensity. Mm. The consequence needs to be strong enough to really matter. And this is where people mess up. They start small and increase if the behavior keeps up. Yeah. But, oh, I see what you mean. That can backfire. Like turning up an annoying song slowly, you don't notice how loud it is till it's too late. Yes. Much better to start with a consequence that means something. And lastly, the schedule how often the punishment happens. The book says consistency, 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 especially at first. Every single time the behavior happens, the consequence follows. Right, a continuous schedule. Later on, maybe you switch to intermittent where it's not every single time. But even then, you gotta be careful. The book mentions that pigeon study. If the reward for the bad behavior is still there, even with punishment, it can come back. Like it never learned. Which is why it's not enough to just focus on the punishment. You've got to provide other behaviors that can be rewarded. Oh, right, right. Like, uh, give them something to do instead. If someone's doing something challenging, they're trying to get something right. They are. And we need to teach them how to get it the right way. The book talked about a study with adults with disabilities. And punishment was way more effective with positive reinforcement for good behavior, too. So it's like you're giving them a map, not just punishing them for taking a wrong turn. It's like, yeah, giving them a different route to get where they need to go. Exactly. But even when you mean well, even when you get the idea, mm. there's a downside to punishment. Got to talk about it. Right. Like the fine print nobody reads. The book mentioned emotional reactions, avoidance. Yeah, definitely stuff to watch out for. Nobody likes being punished. True. And that can lead to, well, understandable reactions, but not always helpful. And then there's avoidance. Instead of learning, they just avoid the whole thing altogether. Like a kid gets yelled at for asking a question in class, they might just clam up, even if they don't understand. Exactly. They don't learn. They just avoid. And we can't forget about the modeling thing either. If a kid sees a lot of punishment, well, they might use it themselves with others. Oh, like do as I say, not as I do. Yes. <laughs> But the one that really gets me is behavioral contrast. What was that one again? Oh, that's a tricky one. It's like the punishment only happens sometimes. So the behavior actually gets worse when there's no punishment. It's like the punishment means, OK, now I can get away with it. Right. The book uses the example of sneaking cookies. Only get in trouble when grandma's around. Otherwise, it's a free for all. Yeah. That's why being consistent everywhere matters. If you're not, you're making it worse without realizing it. It's not just what you do, but where and when. Consistency is key. But I was curious, the book says yelling shouldn't always be the go-to. What are some other ways to use positive punishment? Well, a good no can be surprisingly effective. Right. A firm no or stop that hmm. works wonders, especially with praise for good behavior. Right. But you overuse it, lose its power. If you're always yelling, nobody's listening. Exactly. 
Then there's response blocking, yeah. physically stopping the behavior. Like the book used that example of a therapist stopping a kid from putting their hand in their mouth. Mm. Gently redirecting, not being harsh. Okay. Immediate feedback, but kind. I like it. Mm. What about overcorrection? That one always seemed kind of intense. It can be, but remember, it's not about being mean. It's about practicing the right way a lot. Like that example with the teenager and the grammar mistake. Oh, right. She had to say the sentence correctly like 10 times. It wasn't to be mean. Mm -hmm. It was to replace the old way of talking. Yeah. Repetition. Yeah. Or remember the muddy shoes example? Yeah. Don't just clean your shoes. You practice wiping them on the mat a bunch of times. Makes sense. So you got to know what you want and then use the best tool for the job. Exactly. And that's where the ethics come in, right? Use the least restrictive but most effective methods. Keep the client safe. It's a lot to balance. It really is. So you want to be kind, but you want to see real change. What happens when being nice doesn't cut it? That is the question, isn't it? And no easy answer. The book talks about Iwata's idea of punishment as a default technology, like the last resort. Okay, yeah. But what does that even look like in real life? How do you know when it's gone that far? You have to have tried everything else. Yeah. I mean really exhausted all the other options, made sure you've individualized the approach, looked at underlying stuff that might be contributing. So always evaluating, adjusting, making sure you've done everything you can before you even think about punishment. Exactly. And even then, it's not a light decision. You know, yeah. it takes careful thought, ongoing assessment, being willing to change things up if you need to. Which is why the research is so important, right? Absolutely. The more we know, the better we can use it ethically or find even better ways that don't involve punishment at all. Yes. This isn't just about getting punishment. It's about always looking for the best ways to help people. Remembering that everyone's different, no one-size-fits-all approach. Exactly. And punishment might be part of the conversation, but it doesn't have to be the whole story. Such a good point. So next time we hear punishment... It's not a bad word, right? It's a powerful tool, but you got to be careful. It is. Knowledge is power, like anything else. The more you know, the better decisions you make. And maybe, as we learn more, we'll find those even better ways to help people learn and grow. Wouldn't that be something? It really would. And that's our deep dive on positive punishment. Hope you found it as interesting as we did. This is just the start. Keep those questions coming. Keep learning. We'll see you next time. <laughs>